Hello everybody, I'm Catherine from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore and the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake. I cannot wait to help get you started learning everything you need to know about your brand new Baby Lock Zest. Let's get started. The Baby Lock Zest has some exciting features, so let's go over some of them. So first of all, you've got 15 built-in stitches within the model of the machine, as well as a four-step buttonhole, and they're all built in right into the machine. They're decorative, they're utility, everything you need to get started. The machine only weighs 13 pounds, so it's incredibly portable. It's something that you can take to classes, events, or just set up within your house. It's really exciting for you to be able to have a machine that is so versatile, so easy to use, and portable, and all those things that you really need to get your sewing journey going. When you open up your Baby Lock Zest, you're gonna have a whole bunch of exciting accessories available to use to get your sewing journey started. So let's go over them. First of all, you have a wonderful little pack of needles that come from Oregon. They're really good needle and they're gonna be nice and strong and get you going. Then you have four bobbins available. You have your basic utility foot. You also have your buttonhole foot. You have a zipper foot. You have a blind hem or adjustable piping foot. You also have a darning plate and a seam ripper. To install your power cord, you're gonna start by looking at your power cord. You've got a flat side and you've got rounded sides. So the flat side is going to insert with the flat side in the back and the little rounded sides towards the front. So you'll just take a hold of it and insert it right into the machine. In order to set up your machine, you're gonna start by turning on the power switch. The power switch is located here on the right side of the machine. Simply flip the switch up and you've got your machine turned on. The next thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to pull up your thread spindles. You can just start by using one of them. If you ever use a twin needle, you can use the other. Simply grasp the top of the spindle and pull it straight up. Here on the face of the machine, there are several things that you need to be aware of. First of all, over here in the thread uptake area, you have your tension dial. Your tension dial has a spin device, and you'll notice that as you're spinning it, some of the numbers don't have squares around them, and some of the numbers do. The numbers that have the squares around them are kind of like your safety zone or default tension settings for the machine. So usually when you get sewing, for the most part, you're gonna be able to leave your tension dial straight on four. Next, you have your stitch selector. So let's start by talking about what's over here on the right side of your machine. These are your stitches, your 15 built-in stitches, as well as your four-step buttonhole. So if I wanted to do a pretty little smocking stitch like is indicated here in green underneath the letter D, I'm going to start by selecting my length knob over to the SS portion. That stands for the second set of stitches or the stretch stitches on the machine. So once I've selected that, if, if I wanna do this little smocking stitch underneath D, now I can come over here to my stitch selector and simply spin my selector up to the letter D. The letter D lines up with the dot that's at the top of the machine. Over here, we've got a number of decorative stitches as well as utility stitches that are gonna be functional for you to use. So just to reiterate, if I want any of this first set of stitches, I'm going to dial in my length to whatever length I'd like to choose to use. Once I've dialed in my length, I'm going to come over to my stitch selector knob. If I want A, I'm going to just spin my selector knob until I get A lined up with the dot on the top. If I want stitch number B, which is going to be a left needle straight stitch, I'm just going to spin my knob over to B, and so on and so forth. We will be going over these stitches and reviewing them in conjunction with our feet later on in our video. The last thing I wanna talk about is this knob right here. This little knob is a lever, and this is our reverse feature. So when you select it, there is a stopping point that you hit when you pull the knob down. In order to actually engage the reversing, you need to bring the knob all the way down with your pressure. So when it's not being used, it's gonna be sewing forward. When you need to reverse, you're going to push past that stopping point and bring your lever all the way down. On the front of the machine, you've got your accessory bin. 
In order to install and remove your accessory bin, you're simply going to take it and push it off. There's insertion points. You'll bring it right to the front of the machine and install it on. Let's take a moment to examine the bobbin case area. Start by opening the front lid to access your bobbin case area. If you need to get in here to install your bobbin, that's how you're going to open it up so that you can do that. Also, it's important to keep your machine free of dust and lint. So let's talk about how to do that. Your bobbin case is right here. You're gonna start by opening up the lid, the flange to the bobbin case, and you're simply gonna pull your bobbin case out. Once you have your bobbin case out, you can see down into the inside of the machine. You've got these two levers here on either side that are gonna help hold the bobbin case area installation in place. So in order to get your machine clean, you're going to open up these two levers by spinning them, the left knob out to the left, the right knob out to the right. Once you've done that, you're going to need to remove the inside sections of the bobbin case area. So just simply grab a hold of it and pull it all out. Okay. So now you're looking inside your machine. This area can fill up with lint and fuzz as you're sewing. So you're gonna wanna take one of your little cleaning brushes and simply dip it in, swipe out any dust, and remove the dust with your fingers. Okay, so now how do we reinstall all of these parts and pieces? Okay, so if you look at it, you've got several different parts and pieces here. You've got your bobbin case itself, and then you've got your two inside portions of the machine. If you look inside the machine, you've got kind of like a left half of the moon there. So you've got your left half of the moon there, and then over here on this side, you've got your right half. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the right half and simply install it against the left half. Again, this portion stays within the machine and this is the portion that you remove while you're cleaning it. So you're lining them up so that they make a perfect circle. The next thing you need to do is install this portion which is going to hold all of those things in place. If you look carefully at this, right down here there's a little bitty nub. Now that nub is going to line up with this little hole right here. Also, at the top of this, there's a section where your needle goes in and out right there. So we're gonna start by taking this over here and just simply line it up so that you're lining up that nub with the insertion point and it falls into place. Once you've got that installed, it's time to re-lock our little levers here. So the left knob is going to lock into the right over the little locking button, and then the right knob locks over to the left in order to hold everything in place. In order to install the bobbin, once you've got your bobbin thread in there, again, you're going to open the lid to your bobbin case there. At the top of your bobbin case, you've got this little bit of an arm kind of hanging out on top. Once you're on top, you need to look over here in your bobbin case. There's a little nub right there at the very top. So this arm is going to insert into that nub. So as you hold this open, you're going to aim down at it so that you line those up. See how I can spin it? You're gonna line them up so that they're in line with one another and simply push it down to install the bobbin case. Let's go over the steps you need to take in order to wind your bobbin. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is disengage your drive shaft. What the heck is a drive shaft? Well, first of all, as you're sewing, your needle is moving up and down with your drive shaft. However, when you go to wind your bobbin, you don't want that to be happening. We just wanna focus on the bobbin winding. So out here on the end of your machine, you have your hand wheel, and you're gonna start by simply taking a hold of your hand wheel and pulling your little hand wheel out. That's gonna disengage the drive shaft so that your needle isn't moving up and down while you're trying to wind your bobbin. Once you have disengaged your drive shaft, you're gonna install your thread up onto your thread spindle. From there, we're going to come over to the tension disc in order to have our thread managed for us so that we can wind our bobbin. When you put your thread over here into the thread disc, you're gonna start by doing this clockwise. So it starts by passing across the front of the disc and then around towards the back and over towards the bobbin area. So I'm gonna take a hold of my thread. Once I have a hold of my thread, I'm going to come from the bottom of the disc 
around towards the front. So you're installing your thread in between the disc and the little carrier plate that it sits on. That way your thread is going to be properly managed. In order to get your bobbin onto the bobbin winder, there's a little wire on the back of the bobbin winder. So you're gonna to wanna to line that little wire into the insertion point on your bobbin. Here on your bobbin, you've got a little notch and that's going to sit into it. But before we do that, we need to get our thread into the bobbin. So you're gonna take a hold of the end of your thread and you're going to go from the inside of your bobbin out through the little hole in the top of the bobbin. From there, you can grab a hold of it so that you've got your thread coming out of the top of your bobbin. Now you're going to line up that little wire with your little wire on the bobbin and simply push it down. You will push your bobbin winder over to the right to engage your bobbin winding. You're gonna hold on to your thread with a nice firm grasp and step on your foot pedal in order to wind your bobbin. If you'd like to let go and trim at some point, you can, or you can just hold on to it while it continues to wind. Whatever makes you happy. When you're satisfied with the amount of thread that you have on your bobbin, you're gonna start by re-engaging your drive shaft in order to sew. So just simply press in your, your hand wheel here on the end of your machine. At that point, you're gonna reach up here and you're going to disengage your bobbin. Simply click it over to the left. You can take a pair of scissors and just cut your thread. And now it's going to be time to lift your bobbin straight off of the bobbin winding knob and we're gonna install the bobbin. Let's take a moment to install our bobbin into the bobbin case. So first of all, let's look at the bobbin here. With this bobbin, I've got the thread coming off the top of the bobbin. So I'm going to take a hold of it with my hand, with the thread on the right side of the bobbin and hold on to the bobbin. Once we've got that, looking at the bobbin case here, there is a little bit of an entrance point here at the top of the bobbin case. So what I need to do is I'm going to insert my bobbin right into the bobbin case and I'm gonna pull the thread around to that top entry point. Once we've done that, look here at the top. So the thread needs to pull around and get into this section of the bobbin case. So simply pinch the bobbin and the bobbin case together and then with your other hand, pull the thread in until you get past that little clicking point and you've installed your bobbin. So in order to install your bobbin, Remember, you're just going to simply spin it in with the knob headed towards the top to line it up with that portion, push it straight in, and you can let go and everything's clicked into place. So in order to thread your machine, you're gonna go ahead and leave your thread spindle up here on the top. Grab a hold of one of your tails and you're gonna start by heading straight to the left. When you do that, you're gonna catch your thread behind this first hook and you're going to come straight down this right side of your threading channel. So insert your thread down into that channel. As you do that, keep your right hand on your thread up here so that you can manage it with some tension. You're gonna come straight down to where it's indicated where it shows number two, and that's where we're gonna U-turn and come back up with our thread. So we're gonna U-turn under number two, and we're gonna come straight back up. And as we get here to the top, let me just show you, one of the things that's very important here is that your needle needs to be in the totally upright position for threading, which it isn't right now. As you can see, I'm missing my threading hook right here. So I'm gonna hold a hold of the thread right here, and I'm going to turn my hand wheel to take my needle all the way down and bring it all the way up. As I bring my needle all the way back up, my little threading guide has come up. This is, this is the uptake lever. So we wanna make sure your needle is in the highest position for your thread to go into the uptake lever. So again, we're gonna come up on the right side of this channel, swing around towards the left and head back down with our thread. So I've gone up on the right and I'm swinging around the back of the uptake lever, coming straight down the channel. So now that we're right here, we're going to take our thread from the right to the left so that it comes behind this little thread guide bar. Now we're gonna head down here towards our needle. So again, we're going to come from behind it towards the front so that we're hooking it into that thread guide area. Now we need to thread the needle. So in here, inside the machine, you've got your presser foot lifter button. So when it's down, 
your presser foot is down. When you lift it up, your presser foot is up. In order to thread the needle here, we need some space. So I'm going to go ahead and put my foot down, and now we're just going to put our tip of our thread from the front to the back here in the needle. I've got a clean snip of my thread, and so now I'm going to just take the tip of the thread and put it right into the eye of the needle. Right there, I've got my thread inserted from the front to the back, and I can take a hold of the tail of my thread and simply pull carefully and slowly so that I've got my thread to the back of the needle. At that point, I'm going to lift up my presser foot and swing my thread underneath the presser foot. In order to start sewing, we need to pull up our bobbin thread. So I've got a hold of my thread with one hand and I'm going to take a hold of my hand wheel and turn it towards myself. Never turn your hand wheel here in the end of your machine away from yourself. So you're going to turn it towards yourself and gently hold on to your top thread. Your needle is going to make a full rotation there from lowest point to highest point and simply give a small gentle tug on your thread and you're going to pull up your bobbin thread. Once you can see the little loop poking out there, you can get a hold of that with some scissors or a pencil. And now I've got both my bobbin and my top thread pulled up to the top of the machine. I can close my bobbin area and again, run my thread down underneath the center of my foot and head off towards the back of the machine. You can grab a hold of your accessory bin at this point and install it right back on your machine. Let's take a moment to talk about how to install and remove your presser foot. So occasionally you're going to want to change your presser foot from your normal zigzag utility foot. On the back of the machine, you've got a little silver lever attached to your presser foot holder. So you're simply going to take that and pull it towards yourself. It just drops the foot right off. So when you need to reinstall that foot or put on a new foot, you're going to take a hold of your foot and there's a bar at the front of it. So you're going to be lining that bar of the foot against this presser foot holder. So I'm simply going to line it up nice and close and then take a hold of my presser foot lever button and bring it down so that it clicks right into place. Let's take a moment to go a little bit more in depth about how to pick our stitches and how to make our settings for those stitches. All right, so when we look at the front of the machine, as I indicated before, you've got 15 stitches here on the front of the machine. You've got your first set of utility stitches and you've got your second set of stretch stitches and also decorative stitches. Let's look at the zigzag here, stitch number C, the first option. So in order to get the zigzag, I'm going to come over to my stitch selection knob and I'm going to spin it into C. However, on the front of the knob, you can see we have a little teeny tiny skinny dashes which get further and further and further away from one another and a little bit longer. Actually, that's the stitch width on our zigzag. So if I want a narrow zigzag, I'm only just barely going to spin it away from the B. If I want a nice wide zigzag, I'm going to keep on spinning that knob until I get all the way up into C. That will be your widest zigzag. In order to choose a straight stitch, you have two options, A and B. If you look at the little oval indicator here, the A straight stitch is in the center of the oval. That's going to be a center needle position straight stitch. If you look at B, this one is in the left needle position straight stitch. Now, what is the difference between a center and a left needle? When you're sewing in center, this is an ideal setting for doing piecing work and things where you might want a more narrow seam, a quarter inch seam or a three eighths inch seam. When you're over here in the left needle position, actually your needle is getting full support on three sides, at the back of your needle plate, at the left of your needle plate, and in front of your needle plate. So this selection, B, is better for when you're doing garments, bags, purses and things like that, that you're going to have a little bit more of a 5 8 inch seam allowance or bigger.
Here on your needle plate, you've got a number of markings that are gonna help you line up your fabric so that you can achieve a proper seam allowance. On the front part of your needle plate, the numbers that are there are indicated by centimeters. On the back of your needle plate, the numbers that are there are indicated in fractions. So for most of us here in America, we're gonna be sewing with a 5 8 inch seam allowance when we're doing garments. As you move closer towards your needle, that's where you get smaller and smaller seam allowances. 3 8 of an inch and even quarter of an inch are gonna be based off of these number fractions here in the back of the needle plate. Right above your stitch selection is a picture on your four step buttonhole. So let's talk about how we achieve this. This buttonhole is gonna be completed in exactly what it says, four steps. The first part of the buttonhole is accomplished by starting sewing away from you and then the fabric moves towards you. So step one, it comes down closer to you. Step two is going to be the bar tack at the bottom of the buttonhole. Step three then progresses back towards the beginning, towards the top of the buttonhole. And step four is going to be the bar tack at the back of the buttonhole. Right here on your stitch selector knob, this is where we're going to dial in when we are working on step one, or step two, or step three, or back to step four, okay? Down here we have our buttonhole foot. Along the left side of the buttonhole foot, there are red notches which indicate starting and stopping points depending on the size of your button or your manufacturer's pattern instructions. Within the buttonhole foot, you've got two little red tick marks. That's where you're gonna be aligning your top and bottom bar tacks at the start and stopping points of your buttonhole. In order to install your buttonhole foot, you've got the bar in the center of your foot, which is going to align with your presser foot holder. So take a hold of your buttonhole foot, slide it to where that's going to align, and then bring your presser foot down so that it clicks into place. You'll notice that your buttonhole foot can now slide backwards and forwards, depending on the size of your buttonhole. Once you've got your fabric marked according to your pattern requirements, or depending on the size of the button if you've made little changes, I like to mark my fabric here by a little tick mark where I'm gonna have my start and stopping points. Just for my own point of reference, I also like to mark down the center of my buttonhole with a line. So let's place our fabric right here underneath our foot. So as I look at it, I'm going to just kind of slowly indicate for myself the bottom of the button. So I like to align the bottom of my button with the start of that presser foot, and then slowly bring things towards me, my fabric and the buttonhole foot, so that I can start at the back of the buttonhole. Again, I'm keeping the top of the buttonhole lined up with those little red tick marks inside my buttonhole foot. The four step buttonhole on the baby lock zest has some width adjustments and some length adjustments that we need to make. So over here, we're gonna start by selecting our buttonhole length selection. As we are further away and closer to the number one, that is going to be a less dense or longer space between stitches for lighter weight fabrics. As we spin our knob over closer towards the zero, that's going to compact our stitches, make them more dense, and that's more appropriate for heavier weight fabrics. In general, I just like to keep it right in the middle. Moving over to the stitch selector knob, obviously we're gonna start with part one. Again, it starts at the back of the buttonhole and comes down towards you, start sewing towards you. Okay, let's stitch it. Once I've completed side one, I need to get my needle up out of my fabric so that I can turn my knob over to part two of the buttonhole. So now that I have my needle in the highest position, I'm going to turn my stitch selector knob over to part two of the bar tack. Now let's do the bottom bar tack. Now this time we need to end with the needle on the right side.
So I'm going to complete that last stitch on the right and get my needle up out of the fabric once again. So now I can come back over to my stitch selector knob and go to part three. This time it's going to sew away from us towards the beginning of the buttonhole. All right, so now that I'm there at the beginning, I need to make sure I'm on my right hand side, bring my needle up out of my fabric to complete that last right hand side stitch, and I'll spin my stitch selector knob one last time over to part four of the buttonhole. All right, let's do that top beginning bar tack. Okay, our buttonhole is complete. Simply lift up your presser foot and remove your fabric out from underneath your machine. Once all your buttonholes are complete, you're gonna take a hold of your seam, seam ripper. Make sure you're using the back non-sharp cutty side so that you can in insert your tip of your seam ripper into the center of your buttonhole and simply slice through so that you can cut your buttonhole. One pro tip I like to use is I only go part way and then I come in at it from the other side. I spin around and I start at this side and I cut back to center. That way I never accidentally slice through either end of my buttonhole. Let's talk about installing the button. For your baby lock zest, you've got a darning plate. This darning plate allows you to install buttons and it also allows you to do free motion quilting because what it does is it actually covers up the feed dogs, not allowing them to move your fabric. So you can form your stitches on your own in whichever way that you choose. The front of your darning plate is marked with the word front. Simply lay your darning plate down and slide it backwards and it will click right down into place once you have it into its proper position. We're gonna select a zigzag stitch in order to stitch this button onto our fabric. So I'm gonna start by selecting stitch number C on the top selection of stitches. So I'll come over to my selector knob and I will spin it towards the C. Remember the wider, the longer the lines, the closer to the C, the wider the zigzag. For most buttons, you're gonna want a really wide zigzag. So I've got it locked in right there at C. Then I'm going to change the length up to a 2.5 standard stitch length. That's not going to make too much of a difference because we're gonna be using our darning plate, but that is the standard setting. Once you've placed your button onto your fabric, wherever you've marked it for your pattern requirements, you're going to need to slide your button back underneath your standard presser foot. There are two holes in the tip of your button. Those two holes need to be visible within the needle insertion area on your standard foot. So once I slid it back, I can actually raise a little bit more and lower a little bit more my presser foot by using my presser foot lever. Ideally, again, I want to see both of those holes right in the center of my presser foot. At this point, it's always best to give a test. So I'm going to take a hold of my hand wheel and I'm going to gently insert my needle, making sure that it does indeed enter the hole of the button. Then I'm going to keep spinning that hand wheel towards myself so that I can check that the right side of the button also enters nice and evenly into those holes. At this point, you can step on your presser foot so that you can go ahead and sew your button on. That's all you need to do. At the end, make sure your needle is up out of your fabric, lift up your presser foot, and remove your button and fabric from your machine. To remove your darning plate, simply lift up and slide it forward. Here we've installed the zipper foot. So let's talk about this foot for a moment. Right here on the right side of a foot, there's a little inlet and that's where the needle is going to be going in and out. We wanna make sure that when we sew our zippers on, our needle needs to be with the center needle position, which is stitch selection A. With that center needle position, the needle's gonna be able to fall into that inlet without hitting the foot. 
If you're on stitch selection B, that'll be the left needle position, and that would put your needle over to where it would hit the metal of the foot when it comes down. So please make sure that you're in stitch selection A, a straight stitch center needle position. Once you've got that, you're going to be lining up the ridges of your zipper right against the center of the fold of your fabric. This is a really fast and easy way to install zippers. So the coil of my zipper is lined up within the seam. I'm going to raise my presser foot and install this to where the ridges of my zipper are against the right hand side of my foot. At that point, you're just going to sew your seam, again, making sure you keep your seam right on the coil of your zipper. Once you've sewn the left side, and you're gonna stop sewing with your needle in the top position up out of your fabric, you will simply raise your foot and you can spin your fabric around at this point because now we're going to be starting on the opposite side. So you'll put your foot down. Again, the coil of your teeth are on the right side of your foot. You're making sure your needle is there in the little inlet and you can sew the second side of your zipper. Once you stop, you need to raise your needle and make sure it's up out of your fabric, lift your presser foot, and remove your fabric out from underneath your presser foot. And you'll open up this seam, and now your zipper will freely pass in and out of your zipper area. Your baby lock zest comes with an adjustable blind hem foot. In order to move where your guide is, you'll simply take this screw right here and spin it one direction or the other, and it will move your guide in and out for the depth of your blind hem. I have mine set and I'm ready to go. Up here, there are two blind stitches on your stitch selector, blind hem stitches. The first one is F. It is for woven fabrics. Your other one, your second one is E, and that one is for stretch fabrics. The fabric that we're using right now is a woven fabric, so I need to choose F. I will come over here to my selector knob and simply spin it until I have F in position with my black dot at the top. Now we can come over here and we can sew our blind hem. When you're done, make sure your needle is out of your fabric, lift your presser foot, remove your fabric from your piece. Once you've got that point done, let's go ahead and look at the right side of the fabric. So I'm going to lift my fabric and then you're gonna give it a good press. That's what you want, nice little bites on your blind hem. And there you've got your perfect little blind hem. Your Baby Log Zest has some basic utility stitches, but there are some also some really fun, pretty decorative and um, stitches that aren't used as often, but they're wonderful to have. So first of all, I wanted to point out here, stitch D in the top selection. This is called a Trico stitch or a triple zigzag. This is a really great stitch for installing elastic. It's a three-step zigzag because it literally takes three steps to the right, three steps to the left. And that way you can stretch your elastic as it's being installed. And when you let go, it can gather up your fabric. That's one very, very useful stitch. Another stitch I want to talk about is down here in the second set of stitches, or the stretch stitches. This particular stitch right here is called a knit stitch for stretch fabrics. This is really good so that you can install a collar onto a t-shirt or anything like that. It's a wonderful stitch to have. It's awesome that this machine comes with it. One of the very useful stitches that's also decorative and very pretty to have, and also a much denser stitch, so it's a bit of a safety stitch, is these two stitches right here, which are both a triple straight stitch or a bean stitch. They're wonderful for top stitching. They can also be used to help really secure your fabric within the inseam of pants. One of my favorite stitches when I do decorative stitching is this stitch right here. It's a triple zigzag, but it's also called a rickrack stitch. 
So basically, instead of just having a regular zigzag, which steps to the right and steps to the left and steps to the right, this one does it three times. So it's a very bold, very dense stitch. So it goes back and forth and back and forth and back, and then it goes to the other side. So you end up with a very decorative stitch that looks like Rick Rack. Those are some of my favorite stitches I just wanted to take a second to point out. I hope you enjoy them as well. So we've come to the end of our learning journey. I hope you're excited about your brand new Baby Lock Zest. Remember, if you don't have this yet, we do sell this model. It is available online on our website at www.sewing.net. It's also available right here in the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore, as well as at our location up in the villages, the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Now take off and sew.